welcome everybody. We begin by acknowledging, of course, that we meet on the land of the Woiwurrung people and we pay our respects to their elders past and present. Tonight we're celebrating a local event in Clifton Hill, but an event which is of national and indeed international importance. You're all very welcome. It's fantastic to get such a turnout on, on a Friday night. Um, thank you very much for coming and thank you to Val for doing this. Um, as Val pointed out, this is really a very, very significant speech uh, in Australia's history. So I'm going to be reading from um, uh, a report of, from the Advocate of the 23rd of September 1916. Uh, the Advocate followed him everywhere, uh, printed every one of his words um, um, with uh, uh, great attention to detail. Mannix never wrote anything. Uh, he thought about this. He would have thought long and hard about this uh, talk he gave, but there wouldn't have been any... Uh, any ostensible notes. Father Malone, ladies and gentlemen, I have come here this evening at some inconvenience to open your bazaar. I am wanted at this moment in another place, but your generous work and my regard for Father Malone compel me to accept the invitation to come here and declare the bazaar open. I hope the bazaar will be a great success indeed. The large attendance despite the inclement weather gives every hope and assurance of that success. <laughs> every Catholic in Melbourne had really flat hands. <laughs> Life of applauding the Archbishop. Um, each and every one of them would lend a helping hand and so relieve Father Malone of any anxiety in regard to clearing off the debt of the parish. <laughs> Uh, this is in brackets. Continuing, His Grace said he had only two or three minutes to spare, as it was incumbent upon him to leave as soon as possible for the fulfilment of another duty. I think it was uh, baptising B.A. Santa Maria, a thing he regretted later in life. <laughs> However, it was only right and proper for him to say a few words about a subject which was uh, occupying them all at the present time. His Grace, uh, who was loudly applauded, but it doesn't say in brackets, so you're free of that one, said, <laughs> I am as anxious as anyone can be for the successful issue and for an honourable peace. I hope and believe that the peace can be secured without conscription in Australia. For conscription is a hateful thing and is it almost certain to bring evil in its train. The present war could never have assumed such disastrous proportions it could never have stained, be stained with such horrors if conscription had not prevailed in Europe. <laughs> I have been under the impression and I still retain the conviction that Australia has done her fair share. I'm inclined to say even more than her fair share in this war. <laughs> there may be uh, in the Commonwealth those who have uh, not uh, borne their fair share of the common burden but I think their number is comparatively small. It seems therefore truly regrettable that Australia should be plunged into the turmoil of a struggle about conscription which is certain to be bitter and which, which will give joy to Australia's enemies. Australians, brave as they have proved themselves on the field, are a peace-loving people. <laughs> the Prime Minister has very wisely ignored evil counsel and allowed the people to decide for themselves. He has provided them with full freedom of discussion. I hope the discussion will be conducted with as little heat and friction as the circumstances permit. I trust that the voice of the people will be heard and that it will prevail. We can only give both sides of the uh, both sides a patient hearing and then vote according to our judgment. There will be difficulties among Catholics, for Catholics do not think or vote in platoons. <laughs> and on most questions there is room for divergence of opinion. But for myself I will take it will take a good deal to convince me that conscription in Australia would not cause more evil than it would avert. Honestly, I honestly believe that Australia has done her full share and more and she cannot reasonably be expected to bear the financial strain and the drain upon her manhood that conscription would involve. <laughs> if conscription were to be adopted, I should expect to find later on that many of those who now are its loudest advocates would be the first to rise up against those 
uh, against the taxation necessary to redeem our obligations to the returned soldiers or to the widows or orphans as dependents of the soldiers who gave their lives on the battlefield. Nothing's changed. I think that I can say I have read most of the appeals that have been made for conscription in Australia, but in spite of these eloquent and impassioned appeals, my common sense will not allow me to believe that the addition of 100,000 or even 200,000 conscript Australians to the 15 million of fighting men the Allies have at their disposal could be a deciding factor or even a substantial factor in the issue of the war. However, the people must decide for themselves. The vast majority of voters of the referendum will, of course, be persons who could not be called to serve in a conscription army. But still, I think even they, or the majority of them, will prefer to lie on, uh, rely on the voluntary system and make it more efficient if they can, rather than to force the men of Australia, married and single, to face enemy guns in Europe by pointing Australian guns at them in the rear. <laughs> that is what conscription in many cases would mean, and I incline to believe that those who propose it have misjudged the temper of the Australian people in the mass and their passionate love for freedom. It says here, loud applause. <laughs> I notice that certain authorities in the Anglican Church have given their public support to conscription. They are, of course, quite in their right to do so. We all have uh, equal right to contribute to the discussion, and in the exercise of that right, I have spoken tonight. Oh, it says... Prolonged applause. <laughs> uh, Dr Mannix concluded by wishing every success to the bazaar and said it would afford it in great pleasure to declare the bazaar open. And that was followed by cheers. So we'll do that again. <laughs> I declare this bazaar open. Yeah!